I am involved in a number of projects. Um, UCLA has had um, a f collaboration in the field in China since 1999. Mm -hmm. um, we work in Sichuan. Uh, and we have been working on ancient salt production there uh, in along the Yangtze River Valley. Now that part of the project uh, we have completed and now we are doing a large-scale um, aerial survey mm -hmm. in uh, the Sichuan Basin, in the Chengdu Plain, not far from Chengdu, the capital of Sichuan province where we are looking at uh, the deployment of human settlement over the landscape over a very long time span from basically 3000 BC all the way to around 0 AD. Um, and uh, we are hoping to find evidence uh, of how the uh, salt industry of this area, this is an old uh, salt producing area, how the salt uh, industry may have um, triggered the development of states and of um, uh, what archaeologists call social complexity of, uh, of um, uh, hierarchical societies uh, with um, a significant concentration of wealth at um, a small number of centers. Um, this is at this point only a hypothesis. We haven't proven yet that there is such a connection between um, salt production and social developments, uh, but we are still at the beginning of the project, so uh, the evidence may still come out. And in any case, we've already found um, at least uh, 200 uh, previously unknown archaeological sites in the course of the survey. Um, and uh, in this way, we have already learned a great deal uh, that was pre previously unknown about the settlement history of this part of China. Mm -hmm. This part of uh, this project is mostly in the hands of my former students, such as Rowan Flad, to whom you have talked. But I still visit it from, from time to time. and. Um, and uh, um, I'm still uh, very much interested in the outcomes. Um, I'm also in involved right now in an international project uh, concerning the study of uh, the history of archaeology in China. Uh, you know, archaeology um, is, um, of course, in one sense, a modern science. Uh, it has its origins uh, in the West, and it was introduced into China in the 1920s. But China has its own long tradition, m many centuries long tradition, uh, of uh, research, of, uh, of systematic research into the material heritage of the past. And um, now uh, it is very interesting to um, compare these traditional approaches and um, the very considerable um, results that they have uh, yielded with what is now known, thanks to the, modern, uh, the methods of mo modern archaeology, as they have been um, applied for now almost 90 years in China. And uh, so um, I am uh, doing this uh, within a, um, a project um, that, um, that looks at pre-scientific or pre-modern archaeological traditions all over the world. Of course, there is this kind of thing in Europe too. Before modern archaeology came around, there were all kinds of ways of dealing with the um, Roman ruins and artifacts and uh, other uh, kinds of antiquities that people knew. And that too is part of the history of archaeology, even though when archaeology as a modern discipline came into being, it, it changed very considerably. And so we are working on what is probably going to be a rather hefty book, uh, 850 pages uh, or more, with contributions about uh, different areas of the world where these kinds of traditions exist in one form or another. 
Then I have a number of other projects. Mm -hmm. It depends on whether you um, are interested in spectacular objects coming out of the ground, in which case you would talk about uh, important tombs that have been excavated, um, and there have been many of those. Um, for instance, uh, the, um, the tombs from the 8th to 6th centuries BC at a place called Liang Dai Sun, uh, which is near Xi'an in northwestern China, or the, the tombs of the early rulers of Qin, which, uh, which are further to the west in Gansu province, etc., etc. Or whether you are more interested in sort of uh, new results that tell us things that we never knew before about China, even though, you know, they may not have anything to do with um, tremendously attractive um, uh, objects coming out of the ground. And there, of course, we have um, very interesting work that is now being performed by uh, various teams of scholars, some of them you know, entirely Chinese teams, some of them uh, collaborations with Western institutions, which do this um, survey work over long, uh, over uh, large uh, territories in different parts of China, trying to figure out how um, uh, the uh, settlement pattern developed over time, uh, how um, the social order manifested itself in se uh, settlements of different orders, villages, little towns, larger towns, cities, how that changed over time. Um, that's one of the core issues in archaeology. It hadn't really been addressed in China until fa fairly recently. And now, thanks to um, the widespread application of uh, settlement archaeology methods, in, a diff uh, in various parts of China, this, uh, this kind of evidence is gradually coming out of the ground. And um, it will, of course, become truly re relevant only when it is published uh, and when um, it, um, it is published in such a form that different um, areas can be compared with one another. So far, we are not quite there. We, ha we know that this work is being done every, uh, in a number of uh, different places. We know um, that people, uh, we, we know some of the um, results in the form of short summaries that were published as articles, but we are basically still waiting on, uh, uh, we are waiting for the um, publication of the final reports. And so um, it's premature to say what will come out of this, but we know already that um, this is going to uh, yield uh, very significant new perspectives. For the first time, we will be able to say something about, for instance, the life of uh, the peasantry, who always and still are today, the vast majority of people living in China. And uh, we will we will know, you know, how the the um, vi the villages of the agricultural populations um, related to, for instance, market structures that involved not only villages but also larger settlements. And uh, we will know something about the nature of these settlements. Were they, for instance, um, trading centers or were they mostly administrative or maybe religious or, or a combination and where do we find uh, what kinds of functions concentrated in what way.